Yes, hello friends, Matt Burns here, and I finally made it to the Landers studio. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, you guys, you shouldn't have. In this video, I'm going over rhythms that will change the way you make music. These are rhythms that you can use in melodies, drums, percussion, bass lines, you name it. Shall we guys? Ready, Steve, get in here. What I'm talking about. Let's get into it and get the MIDI pack below. All right, our first serving, a little rhythmic hors d'oeuvre called the Charleston. Oh, jazz hands for sure. The Charleston rhythm is used in many genres. It can be heard on the song Stand By Me by Benny King, the rhythm guitar part in Can't Buy Me Love by The Beatles, and the bass part in Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye. This rhythm has roots in African music. It was introduced to the mainstream in 1923 with Charleston by James P. Johnson. The song was written for the Broadway musical Runnin' Wild and accompanied a dance of the same name. No. No, I won't do the dance. The syncopated style of the Charleston instantly caught on and became a staple rhythm in jazz and blues music that followed. The Charleston rhythm is written as a dotted quarter note followed by an eighth note. It has a start and stop quality that brings a nervous energy to a track. A variation on this is the reverse Charleston where the pattern starts on the off. Okay, this next one is a very popular dish. The Tresillo rhythm. This has been used in a lot of pop hits over the last few years. You'll hear it in songs like Shape of You by Ed Sheeran, Sorry by Justin Bieber, and even clocks by Coldplay. The Tresillo extends the Charleston rhythm by adding an extra note at the end of the bar and consists of beat groupings three, three, and two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. This pattern has origins in Afro-Cuban music and is prominent in many genres. Using the Tresillo rhythm in your music is a great way to align your sound with some of the biggest pop hits today. It's gonna give you an exotic feel, a danceable quality, and it's a great rhythm section figure that can serve as a solid foundation of your track. Case in point, check out the Tumbao bass line. Next, we have a tasty little pattern called the hemiola. The hemiola is a type of polyrhythm, specifically three over two. You'll hear this rhythm in the hi-hat part of Black Velvet by Alana Miles, the guitar part in Everybody Wants to Rule the World by Tears for Fears, or the piano part from Daydreaming by Radiohead. The hemiola is the occurrence of three evenly spaced notes superimposed over two evenly spaced notes. It's important to note that both the group of three and the group of two occupy the same amount of space, which gives the hemiola its distinct syncopation and rhythmic dissonance. This can easily be achieved by accenting every other eighth note triplet. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. This rhythm has a lot of tension, and if you use it consistently throughout your track, it'll give your song a unique swinging feel. Often the two components of this rhythm are spread out between different instruments within the ensemble. For example, three in the guitar and two in the drums. Okay, time for another greasy polyrhythm, friends. Four over three. This polyrhythm is often superimposed in four four time. You'll hear this rhythm in the guitar part to Razor Glass by Pink, the vocal phrasing of Let Me Love You by Neo, and throughout the Britney Spears track, Till the World Ends. This pattern is the full extension of the groups of three that we introduced in the Tresillo rhythm. The four over three polyrhythm consists of four evenly spaced notes superimposed over three evenly spaced notes. This can be achieved by dividing three notes each into groups of four, then accenting every third note. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. So, what's so compelling about 4-3? Well, it feels kind of dangerous. It's off balance and heavily syncopated. There's a great interview with New Orleans drumming legend Johnny Vidakovich. He equates syncopation to intentionally rocking the boat to shift the listener off balance, then grounding them again to create excitement. And wow, I can't think of a better way to explain that. All right, friends, this next one is definitely the butter on top of this pile of pancakes, the gravy on this poutine, the cheese on top of these nachos. Honestly, guys, I'm starving. Can we just order lunch? Later. Yeah, uh, instantly regret that food order. Anyways, the double Tresillo. You'll hear it in the guitar intro for ACDCs. For those about to rock, we salute you. The underlying groove of Rosanna by Toto and the main keyboard part in Yummy by Justin Bieber. 
The double trisio simply doubles the groupings of the regular trisio pattern to give us three, 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 two, two. This pattern creates a little bit more tension than the regular trisio as it takes longer to resolve its rhythmic dissonance. This pattern actually features a single instance of the four, three polyrhythm, but it quickly resolves it with the two groups of two at the end. And now to wrap up this rhythmic meal in style, a little digestif, the three, two song clave. This is the foundation of many genres such as salsa, mambo, reggae, dance hall, and bossa nova. It can be heard on popular songs like Faith by George Michael, Blank Space by Taylor Swift, and Royals by Lord. The clave rhythm originated in sub-Saharan African music and was introduced to mainstream culture by the song Hey Bo Diddley by the legendary artist Bo Diddley. Clave actually means key in Spanish and it serves as the main rhythmic guide in Afro-Cuban music. This rhythm is also kind of the key to this whole video as the Charleston, Tresillo, and Double Tresillo are all clave-based rhythms. Woo! Nailed it! Full circle. <sighs> well, friends, personally, I'm stuffed. I hope you enjoyed this little rhythmic smorgasbord and that you can make use of some of these popular rhythms in your music. At the very least, just being familiar with these rhythms and their names will help you speak the language of music all the more fluently. As always, friends, just let us know in the comments some of your favorite rhythms to use in producing and songwriting. Let me know what you want to see next time. Sorry I didn't get to play any drums today. Maybe we'll play some drums another time. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. It's so great to be here finally in the Lander Studios. Thank you, that's right. <laughs> Shit, sorry. sorry. Okay. It just means so much to me. This is why you stay in school! <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Get out of here, skeleton. I never thought like when I was in university studying music that I would be doing a video talking about hemiolus. <laughs>